inna a'tainaka al-kawthar. We've given you the greatest, the most abundant good. We will gain steadfastness when we remember Allah, when we are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we take account of our own selves. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha. O you who believe, be conscious of your maker. The term taqwallah, it has a broad meaning. Some people say fear Allah. That's included in there, but it has a broader meaning than that. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani makes mention in one of his books, Fath al-Bari, which is a commentary on Sahih al-Bukhari. He says, Taqwa Allahi an taj'ala baynaka wa bayna adhab Allahi wiqaya bimtithali awamirihi wa jitinabi nawahi. The term Taqwa Allah, Taqwa means to create a barrier between you and the punishment of Allah by engaging in the commands and abstaining from the prohibitions. What a beautiful meaning of taqwa. I normally like to use the term, be conscious of your maker. Because if you are conscious of Allah at all times, automatically you won't do things that are wrong. And if you happen to slip a little bit, you will immediately get up and throw that banana peel away. Allahu Akbar. Whatever caused you to slip will be gone. And Allah says, Oh, you who believe, be conscious of your maker. And each one of you should look into what you have prepared for tomorrow. What have you prepared in your books? What have you prepared in your deeds? What have you prepared in your accounts to present to your maker when you are going to meet him tomorrow? What a powerful verse. Allah is telling us, look at your book. What we do today, shaitan makes us look at the books of others. Immediately, we worried about that one, this one. You see that one did this and this person committed that sin and that one is rotten in the heart and we start passing judgment, you know, the hearts of the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us and protect us from this. That is shaitan diverting us from this path of steadfastness. Steadfastness cannot be achieved when you are engaged in the life of someone else. Cheating, deceiving, backbiting, slandering, gossiping and so on. Allahu Akbar. Gossip is a sin. There is a narration the Prophet says also muttafaq alayhi, which means it is agreed upon. It's an authentic narration. The one who gossips has no place in paradise. Hey, Allah forgive us that my beloved mothers and sisters, brothers and fathers who are seated here, let us seek forgiveness. Before we used to know that women gossip, today the men have mastered it mastered it they will put the women to shame it has happened you sit with someone we are busy talking about someone and gossip means just to want to know anything and everything about anyone and everyone why is it so bad in Islam because it diverts you from attending to your own weaknesses it diverts you from doing something constructive what have you got to do with them carry on with your business don't worry about them Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Imagine if gossip is so bad. What about slander? What about backbiting? And yet, that is a norm sometimes in our lives. This is why we say, my beloved brothers and sisters, and again I'm pressing a red button. You see someone who does not appear so religious. You cannot rule that this person is not religious because they might be more particular about these items that are hidden then sometimes those who appear to be the most religious. So remember, all of us are struggling on one path. As I am trying, I know every one of you is trying to achieve the pleasure of your maker. I know that. We all know that. No, we would not be here if we didn't want to achieve the pleasure of our maker. So good news. When you see someone attending a talk, remember we are in one boat, as I said moments ago. Never pass a judgment. Oh, this person you see. And how they were dressed. Oh, someone else came dressed this way. That's got nothing to do with us. They might have a heart made of gold, whilst ours is charcoal. Allahu Akbar. For your information, after some time, charcoal can turn into diamonds. That's a reality. It's a geographic reality. Find out. I come from Zimbabwe, mashallah. We've discovered a lot of diamonds there recently. If I could, I would have brought a bag and shared it with you. But inshallah, what I'm sharing with you is far more valuable than any diamond. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us paradise.